If you've never heard of this problem, then please watch part one of this video to get a description. In part one, we saw that the staircase paths have length too. In this video, we discover staircase-like paths of arbitrary length. Next, we see that this leads to the paradoxical situation where a triangle of fixed area can have non-fractal perimeter of arbitrary length. And finally, we also see that there are staircase-like paths that do what is expected, namely, as they converge to the diagonal, their lengths also converge to the length of the diagonal, namely square root of 2. We build up the staircase curves in a sequence of stages. The first stage is simply the triangle itself and the hypotenuse or diagonal. It will be called at a stage n equal to 1. And the second stage has two triangles or bumps. And we call it stage n equal to 2, second stage. The third stage, n equal to 3, has three bumps and so on, more bumps, higher stages. Now let's figure out the length of each bump. They're all the same, so all we need to do is to figure out the length of one of them and then multiply by their numbers to get the length of the path. Uh, we turn each, we turn our bump around and make it look like a triangle that's sitting on the x-axis, uh, which is of course just a diagonal, or rather a small piece of the diagonal. The base of the triangle is the length of the diagonal divided by the number of um, triangles or bumps. Length of the diagonal or the hypotenuse is a square root of 2. There are n triangle or bumps in stage n, so we get a square root of 2 over n for this little side here. Next, the altitude of the triangle here has length of square root of 2 over 2n which is just half of this here, because we simply, what we have here is simply a square, and the altitude is just half the length of the diagonal of the square, which is to say half the length of the base here. Now, we can figure out the length of each of these sides. They are equal using the Pythagorean theorems, and these two sides here. Here's the triangle that we just looked at, slightly different in the sense that instead of a square root of 2, I have a positive real number c, which will lead, uh, take us to the more general zigzag curves that I mentioned before. Other than that, everything is the same. We apply the Pythagorean theorem to this right triangle here. The base of the right triangle is half the length of uh, the base of the big triangle, which is a square root of 2 over 2n. And so putting everything into the Pythagorean theorem, we get the hypotenuse, the square root of this quantity that you see here. Um, the common denominator, 2n quantity squared, comes out of the square root, becomes 2n. What's left is c squared plus square root of 2 squared, which is, of course, just 2. So each of the two segments that are part of the path um, have uh, this length, have the same length that you see here. The total, total length of the path, let's call it ln in stage n, is the length of each segment that we just calculated, times by the total number of segments, two segments per triangle, or bump, times n bumps. And uh, now I get a simplification by canceling the two ends. And we notice that the length of the zigzag path in stage n doesn't depend on n. It's just a constant number here. So it's the same for every n. If, in particular, if c happens to be square root of 2, then 
the total length of the zigzag curve comes up square root of two square uh, square root of two squared, which is two plus two, and that's just the square root of four or two, which is what we found uh, by uh, visual means in the previous discussion. So uh, for any now that now we have that for any positive real number c, the length of the path will come out a fixed number, which is bigger than the square root of two. Any positive fixed number will work. Being able to cancel the n in this calculation is very important. It's worth mentioning or highlighting. What it says is that as we add new bumps in each stage n, we also reduce their heights in just the right proportion to keep the total length of the path fixed at every stage. It's a perfect balancing act, and it explains why the, there is a jump at the end in the length of the zigzag path. They all stay the same, no matter how many times we uh, refine them, except at the very end, at the very end, where the length of the diagonal is a distinctly different number, square root of two. Here's what we have so far for each of these uh, staircase-like zigzag paths. The length at each stage is always given by this quantity, where c is any positive number. Uh, regardless of the number n of bumps. And uh, secondly, uh, the height of each bump is given as c over 2n. If c is equal to square root of 2, we get the original staircase curve, which is this black curve here, that we talked about in part 1 of the video. If c is less than 2, we get the flat green curve, less than square root of 2, we get the flat green curve. If c is bigger than the square root of 2, we get the taller red curve. <clears throat> and that's simply because um, the height of each uh, uh, curve, or each bump of each curve is uh, given relative to the black curve, as you see here. Uh, two things to notice about these uh, various numbers and relations is that, firstly, that alpha n is bigger than the square root of two for for every n, for every num for every stage n. That's because c is positive, and if we put a positive number here, we get something bigger than the square root of two. And secondly, uh, alpha n can be as large as we want by simply taking c as large as we want. There is an interesting consequence of this that I'll discuss next. Because the length of each zigzag path can be as large as we like, which we can do by taking the value of the parameter c as large as we like, we run into a paradoxical situation. Here it is. Let's first remember that the length of a zigzag path is this uh, L sub n given by this square root. And when c is taken to be a large number, this square root is approximately equal to c, because c square is much larger than 1, and we can ignore 1. Second, here's uh, this orange thick orange line is a zigzag path uh, is sitting inside the triangle with black sides. The thickness of the orange line is just the height of the bumps in the, in the zigzag path. And remember that that was c over 2n. Now I can make the thickness as small as I like if with a given c I pick n so large that c over 2n is as small as we want, maybe even negligible. With all this in mind, uh, let's look at the perimeter of the triangle-like region, having the two sides, one and one, and the topped by this uh, zigzag path or that's in orange. The perimeter of that triangle-like region is um, simply equal to 
1 plus 1, this, the two sides added, plus the length of the zigzag path, that's L sub n, and that's approximately 2 plus c. So for example, if you pick c equal to a trillion, then the perimeter is approximately a trillion, or about a trillion. On the other hand, the area of the triangle-like region that sits under the orange, the thick orange line, let's call that A, is always less than the area of the triangle with the black lines, which contains it. The area of the triangle with the black line is 1 times 1 divided by 2, or 1 half. So while the perimeter can be as large as we want, trillions, if you like, of units, the area of the, the region under the zigzag pack, the triangle-like region under the zigzag pack, is always less than a half of a square unit. And that's the paradox. So far, we have talked about zigzag paths where the bump height or uh, thickness is c over 2n. And uh, this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity, which is OK. Uh, we want the zigzag path to converge to the uh, hypotenuse or the diagonal. However, the lengths of this path, with, uh, L sub n, will stay fixed as soon as we specify c, just get a fixed number. And as such, they can go, these lengths can go to square root of 2 only when c equals 0. Uh, so that all we are left with is ln square root of 2. The only problem is that um, the zigzag paths disappear and we are only left with the diagonal or the hypotenuse. If c equals to 0, um, then this will be 0. So that's not a solution, and we need a different kind of a remedy. Uh, to get that, let's generalize the height sequence to any sequence C sub n that is decreasing to zero. That's what the down arrow means. As n goes to infinity, C sub n is decreasing to zero. As C over 2n certainly is decreasing to zero for any fixed value of C as n goes to infinity. Um, now, what we want to do is to go one step beyond the c over 2n and consider sequences that go to zero at a faster rate, which means that they converge to zero much more quickly. Examples of such sequences are 1 over n squared, or 1 over 2 to the n, or 1 over n factorial. And uh, let's consider the uh, what happens if we pick heights or thickness equal to one of these uh, sequences? Uh, let's get back to uh, a single bump uh, diagram that we had for zigzag paths. Uh, in this uh, bump, we still have the uh, base of the triangle unchanged because the diagonal still has length of square root of 2. So half of the base is now square root of 2 over 2n. And um, now the only change is we want to take c sub n to be one of those faster decreasing sequences. Let's pick 1 over n squared. Use the Pythagorean theorem in this triangle and uh, get uh, the hypotenuse coming up this square root. Now, this hypotenuse is one of the two segments that are part of the zigzag path. Let's figure out the length of the zigzag path. At the stage n, the length L sub n of the zigzag path, the total length, is uh, the length of the segment that we just calculated with the Pythagorean theorem times the total number of such segments which make up the path. There are two segments uh, per bump, and there are n bumps, so two n segments all in all. Uh, let's multiply two n by taking it inside the square root, squaring it, and um, then uh, multiply through the two terms. 
Uh, the result comes out simplifies to 4 over n squared plus 2. And notice that as n goes to infinity, this goes to 0. 4, 4 over n squared goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. And what, is, what we are left with is under the root is just 2. So L sub n converges to square root of 2. And notice that square root of 2 is just the length of the diagonal, which is what we were trying to get to. And therefore, we do not have a paradox anymore. Well, this concludes our video. If you want more explanations and more details, then check out my book, Achieving Infinite Resolution, which is referenced in the video description. Thanks for watching.